Hi everyone, in this course we're going to be taking a look at something that has been coined as mesh clustering. Mesh clustering could be thought of as creating mesh patterns through relationships between neighbouring mesh faces. We will examine two approaches in this course, the first being through a closest point algorithm and the second with a basic look at graph theory. To complete this course, please ensure you have the Anemone plugin and Ivy plugin for Grasshopper installed on your machine. These can both be found at foodforrhino.com. So let's begin with a blank Rhino and Grasshopper document and take a look at this closest point algorithm first, which will form the basis for our mesh clustering in later tutorials. I'm going to begin by creating a populate 2D component, just there. So you can obviously find that under vector, under grid, populate 2D. And essentially what we're going to do, I'm just going to zoom into that, is we're basically going to grab a list item and I'm going to create a panel as well and the panel is just going to start at zero and we're going to grab item index zero of this list and basically measure the closest point um, in this populate 2D that's the next point. If we go ahead and do a closest point right now we'll actually end up with the same point so we actually need to re first remove this from this populate 2D list so I'm going to do a cull index, cull index component and what this will do is it'll give us the power to take a list and cull a specific indice from that list. So now I've got a po that populate 2D that we started with minus that first point. I'm going to then create a closest point component and I'm going to go from this point, we're going to measure from, into this cloud of points, find the next closest point um, on our list which is an index of 82. So then I could go ahead and do a copy of this cull index. I could plug that original cull index into here because we're trying to update this list now and plug that CP index of 82 into here and you'll see to remove that point. I could also go and get like a list item. Actually, no, I wouldn't need to get a list item because we've got that closest point coming out here, you'll see there. And then I could go and do this on repeat. I could then go and find the closest point um, from this point here to this cull list, which is, you know, another CP index. Then I could, you know, cull that list from this list and so on and so forth until basically you start to create a uh, polyline. Um, of each of these points that we're getting. So I'll go and plug them all into here um, and give that a flatten. And you'll see um, if we went and did this iteratively, eventually we'll be able to encapsulate every single point in this entire list. But that'll be a pretty tedious and um, annoying process because then if we went and changed the number of points, our algorithm would be redundant. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Anemone to create a loop that's tailored to the number of points in this Populate 2D that will just quickly go through and loop and connect all of these points together. So I'm just going to go back and just delete these um, components here and we'll just start with all of this stuff with our Populate 2D, our list item, our cull index and closest point. I'm going to come up to the Anemone tab and I'm going to grab a loop start and a loop end and we're going to plug those guys into each other and just start setting up our loop. I'm going to give it a button, oops, a button that will force uh, serves our trigger and the number of times we want to repeat is actually the number in this population so I'm going to go and create a list length and plug that into the repeat. Um, I also just want to create an exit um, with a boolean toggle. Right now I'm going to set that to yes so basically this just says we are exiting the loop right now we don't want the loop to run so I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to plug my population into data and I'm going to zoom to data and actually add an extra um, input. We're going to get an error because the loop end must have the same number of data streams. So I'm going to plug an extra data stream into there. And we're also going to plug that index into um, this D1. And then we're going to basically move these components over here inside of the loop. So let's go and plug those in. We've got the populate to do coming up over here. We want that to override there. And we want it to override there. And then the indice coming out of D1 wants to override there and it wants to override there. Then coming back into data, we want to re-loop, you know, all these points minus this one as our new kind of collection. And then we want that indice to come through as D1. And I'm going to flatten these data outputs coming out of here. So um, if you've used Anemone before, um, well, you should have used Anemone before if you want to do this tutorial properly. We've got plenty of tutorials on using Anemone um, in our video series. Uh, look at video series 4.00. 
Um, you'll be familiar with recording the data um, to kind of create a collection of data. We're not going to record the data of this loop end because basically what we're doing here is we're outputting this huge card list out of the data. So if we went and um, recorded that over and over again, we would get this massive list building up over and over again. It would slow down our algorithm. So we're not going to record um, coming out of anemone. Instead, we're going to create a list item and we're going to grab that data and that item and then we're going to create a data recorder just there if you haven't used that component before it's under parameters and I think it's in utilities um, yep there it is there data recorder and we're going to plug that into there so the way it works is like that's the turn on the recording button and then that's just like cancel it and you can kind of record the limit of data if you want we're going to just have it record all the data we want in this whole thing um, and then at the end we're going to draw a polyline because essentially what we're doing there is we're recording each of the points that we visit in this algorithm so i'm going to go and toggle that onto um, false and then if i go and press this button you'll see our algorithm loops and finds the closest point in um, each of these um, point collections iteratively to create this overall polyline. I'll preview all of these guys off so you can just kind of see that as a um, nice output on its own. So that's essentially the logic of um, this looping algorithm and in the next tutorial we're going to go ahead and apply that on top of a mesh.